Hi, I'm Roger and welcome back to the Tractor Tech channel. A lot of people see an old rusty implement like this and just keep on walking by it think I don't want something rusty like that on my tractor and a lot of people think because it's rusty it's not usable. But for the most part with tractor implements they're made out of very thick steel so a little bit of surface rust isn't going to hurt them at all it's just not going to look that great. Something like this pond scoop even though it doesn't look that good it's still fully functional. I've had this thing for a few years when I got it I was going to clean it up and repaint it and something like this is a lot of work to clean up and paint. Painting's not that bad, but the cleanup is a lot of work. Especially if you have old paint like this that needs stripped off. One time I got a paint stripping disc in at Lowe's, and that thing worked great. It, it really stripped the paint off really well, but I burned it up in like five minutes, and I think the thing was like 10 or $15. So you could use several of them on an implement like this, and that would start to turn into a pretty substantial cost. A few years ago I found out about pressure washer sandblasters, but they required like three or 4,000 PSI to work. Well, I don't have a pressure washer that's that powerful. So recently I saw on Amazon some pressure washer sandblasters that needed like 2,500 PSI to work. So I got one and I figured I'd give it a try on this pond scoop and see how it worked. So here it is. You can see it's still sealed. I haven't used it yet. It hasn't even been opened. This is still the box that it was shipped in. Not doing an unboxing video i just want you to see that this is truly my first use you can see there's even the shipping label on it so the setup's pretty simple i don't need this this is some kind of an adapter for a karcher or karcher however you say it pressure washer It already has the, I believe, quarter inch quick connect, is what it is. So now I have a super long wand, which is going to be nice. And then this just slides on the end, and I stick that down in my sand. So if you look around, there are quite a few of these on Amazon. I chose this one because it has a ceramic tip. If you look at a lot of them, they just have a plastic tip. So you can imagine if you're pushing 2,500 PSI of sand through here, or sand and water, what that's going to do to a plastic tip. A lot of people are saying they're lucky if they last for five minutes. And I believe that the tip is replaceable. Looks like you could take this off and put a new tip in it, and it looks like there were some tips on Amazon. Like when I got this, one of the suggested items was tips. So I'm hoping that the tips are replaceable when they do wear out. But for 25 bucks, if it holds up for a while and I can do a few projects with it, it will pay for itself. Here's a close up of what the dirt scoop looks like currently. If it seems like this thing's going to work well, I can take those bolts out there and the three point hitch portion will come out and the scoop will come off. So it will be in two pieces and I can do a better job then. You can see the inside's really rusty. I'm just using play sand for this project since it's a one-time use type thing with this blaster versus having a blast cabinet where you can use it over and over and over again and it's beneficial to buy high dollar sand. And then since I'm just doing a tractor implement, it's not like I'm doing a car or something that's thin sheet metal where it would be better to have a higher quality sand. Then I just have a five gallon bucket that I'm going to pour the sand into. That way I can stick the suction side of the hose down in there. I've also labeled this bucket for sand. This is going to be my dedicated sand bucket if this works out. You don't want to get this bucket mixed up with your car wash bucket and have a bunch of sand in there and then get that trapped in your wash mitt and wash your car and scratch your car. And here's the pressure washer I'm using. It's 2600 PSI and 2.3 GPM. When you get your sand, buy it from a place that keeps it inside because if it's been kept outside, it's going to be wet. And if it's wet, it's going to clog up on the suction side.
Ran out of gas in the pressure washer. You can see where I did some on the bottom there. I don't know what to think about this thing so far. The pressure washer got to running out of gas there, so I just can't judge it by that particular area, but it's, I was kind of hoping to get that new bare metal look with it, and it's not really doing that. I don't know if I need to get some better sand or what, but I still have a bunch of sand left. And one thing I figured out is your sand should be covered because you can see I'm getting water in it. When you're doing this, water and sand flies everywhere. When I started out using this pressure washer sandblaster, I was disappointed. I guess that's because the first one of these I saw was uh, for use with a recommended 4,000 PSI pressure washer. It was one that Northern Tool sells. And it would strip the metal down to bare metal, cleaner than a new piece of metal. And then it was also faster than this one, which that little pressure washer I think is 2.3 GPM, 4,000 PSI pressure washer, maybe 4 GPM. So that's why well, it would be a lot faster, it'd be twice as fast, I guess. And also, I don't know if you've ever seen the commercials for the dustless blasting, the dedicated sandblasting rigs that are somewhat similar to this. And they look like they work really well, but the cheapest one they have is like eight or nine grand, I think. But then after I got to using it and flipped this thing over and started going across the bottom, it actually wasn't working too, too bad. I was hoping it would work better but I guess my expectations weren't realistic. But after using it, I'm thinking that this pressure washer sandblaster on a pressure washer with 2,500 PSI is a good replacement for an angle grinder with a wire wheel. Because it cleans as good or better than a wire wheel, I think it's faster. And when you use a wire wheel, you have dust flying everywhere. If I was cleaning something like this, I'd wait till a nice day and do it outside so I don't have all that dust flying around the garage that's not good to be breathing that stuff even if you wear a face mask when you get done a lot of times you'll have rust all over your face when you get to using this thing sand gets to bouncing everywhere i did have safety glasses on but next time when i use it i'm going to wear a full face shield because i was afraid some of the sand might bounce up and get in my eye and since the sand was bouncing so bad i had to be careful where i had my cameras I know I got some sand on my DSLR and also had a GoPro that I was doing some of the footage with. Hopefully I didn't mess my cameras up doing this. Then I'm also covered in sand. This is just results with play sand 
if I switch over to a different media, it may work better. If I had a lighter sand, this pressure washer may suck it up better. And a lighter sand would probably clean this down better than what that thick, heavy play sand is. I think I read in the reviews like a number six sand or something like that. I don't, I forget how the sand's rating. So I don't know, I may end up experimenting with some inexpensive sand because you can't afford to buy 50 pounds of sand that costs $50 and then use it up in a short period of time on something like this versus where you use it in a blast cabinet and you can keep on using it and using it and using it, which it does wear out over a period of time. Not sure how long I was using it, but this bucket was pretty close to being full. You could still see where I'd written sand in it, but I probably only used about half of it. I'm gonna lift it and see. Yeah, there's probably 25, 30 pounds in there. And here's what things look like close up. It did a really, really good job knocking all the big scaly stuff off. But I don't know if I can really expect that play sand to get down into these rust pits and clean that out. And even with our sandblast cabinet, if you get some paint that's stuck on something, sometimes it can be really, really difficult to blast off there. And you can see there that the paint was difficult to get. Now here's a place, I was hoping to get it all looking like that. That's where some paint was. It was loose, and it came off. So I think what I'm gonna do is just let this dry. Hopefully it doesn't flash rust too bad overnight. I'm gonna look at it in the morning and see what kind of results I really got. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. In the comment section below, let me know what you think I should try different to get better results if I need to try different sand or if you think this is as good of a result as I'm going to get with this pressure washer and this sandblaster.